Greetings, everybody. My name is Travis Cousy. I'm the Mission Engagement Facilitator for the SED Central Region. And it is a joy and privilege to once again bring this iGo vlog to you to empower you to connect with your neighbors in love and service in order to connect people to Jesus. Well, the last couple of vlogs, we've been taking a look at the, this idea that we've all been called to be everyday missionaries, called to be the priesthood of all believers, to be light in darkness, to, to join Jesus in the great co-mission. It's his mission, but he calls us to join with him and he works in and through us uh, to make disciples of all nations. And the idea that we are called to love and serve our neighbors, and that's really what our vocations, our calling in life is all about. It's all about loving and serving our neighbor. Well, I wanna talk about a practical neighboring idea that I'd like to share with you. And it's really vital if we're really seeking to be the blessing, to be able to connect with our neighbors in love and service the way that we want to and we sense that Jesus is calling you to. And so I wanna to talk today about this idea of a relational capacity. And to talk about that, I wanna share an example of some Legos. Now, many of you are familiar with this if you've had kids. Uh, perhaps you've got boxes of Legos around like we do. We've got crates of them and we've got some uh, different Lego things, builds that uh, we have kept over the years. Or perhaps you're very familiar with these of stepping on these in the middle of the night when you're trying to get to the fridge or go to the bathroom. Uh, kids are, are uh, very notorious for leaving these lying around and for parents stepping on them. But the reason I want to talk about Lego pieces is they really represent this idea of relational capacity really well. On each Lego piece, there's uh, something called studs. I call them knobbies, but the, the official term is studs. And we've got all different kinds here. We, we've got some that, uh, uh, here we've got one that has six. Uh, here we have one that has uh, eight knobbies or studs. Uh, we've got some that have uh, 12, some have 16, some have 24. These are really long ones. And, and what each one of these, these studs or knobs uh, represent uh, in our analogy is thinking of it in terms of relational capacity. And each one of us have a different relational capacity that we're capable of. For some people, you're really remarkable. You can connect with 24 people in a, in a very close relationship. Others of you, it's a little bit more modest. Perhaps it's, it's uh, 12 or perhaps it's eight people. It might be six. Or perhaps for you, you don't go really wide in relationships, but, but it's really deep in relationships. You only can really handle about two close relationships. We're all different when it comes to our relational capacity. Some of it's related to whether we're introverts in life. Some of it's related to whether we're extroverts. But here's the principle that I'd like to share with all of you and why this idea of relational capacity is so important in whatever your ability. There, there's only so much relational capacity we have. Let's, let's take this, uh, this one with uh, eight here for a second. Now, oftentimes what happens, and, and, and we're very well meaning by this, but sometimes in the church, we often take up all of our relational capacity in relationships within the church. And, and it doesn't leave us any relational capacity to connect with our neighbors who are unbelievers outside of the church. And so when we seek to, to try to connect with somebody uh, who's outside of the church, we, we have all of our relational capacity taken up where we don't have a way to be able to connect with and bond and build relationships with those outside of the church. And so what's important for us is so that uh, we have some relational capacity is we've got to leave some relational capacity. We got to make sure that yes, we need to be connected in fellowship within the church with fellow believers, but we've got to make sure we leave some relational capacity with those outside of the church so that we can also connect with, with others as well. And that we then can build relationships that extend beyond just our faith communities. And then from there, we can uh, hopefully uh, be able to connect with still others, uh, maybe other friends that they have, and be able to build a larger network to be a greater blessing in love and service than we can if we just use all of our relational capacity within the church. And so I'd like you to think and pray is, is what is your relational capacity? How many close relationships can you handle at one time in your life? And then the question is, how much of those are used in the church and what kind of relational capacity are you leaving? What kind of room and margin in your life are you leaving for those who are outside the church, who don't know Jesus, so that you can be that greater blessing and, and in love and service that uh, God is calling you to in your neighborhood, wherever you live, work, and play? 
I hope this idea of relational capacity is something that is practical uh, and helps you think about how you can be a greater uh, influence in your community and love and service. And if you have any questions about this or anything else related to how can I be a good neighbor, uh, be a good everyday missionary, feel free to reach out to me. Happy to answer any questions. And with that, I want to wish you God's richest blessings as you seek to be a good neighbor. And with that, we'll uh, catch you next time for our next iGo vlog. Take care, everybody.